It is a glorious weather night for baseball in Cincinnati, and welcome to T-Mobile Tuesday Night Baseball. Great American ballpark in downtown Cincinnati. It's round two of this three-game series. The Arizona Diamondbacks in town, outlasting the Reds in 15 innings last night, winning by a final count of two to one. And hi again, everybody, alongside the Cowboy, Jeff Brantley and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds baseball. And boy, it was a long night last night, Cowboy. You talked about it during the game. That's the kind of game, if you don't win, is a very, very tough time getting to bed last night. Well, the Reds put a ton of zeros on the board last night and only gave up one run before the final run that cost them the game. And that kind of pitching, uh, you got to get some runs, buddy. And Brian Price certainly felt the same way following the 2 1 decision last night. We're not producing at all, and we need to. We, we can't. Uh, we can't waste this type of pitching. It's uh, you can't. You can't play a game like that in this ballpark and play 15 innings and score a run. That can't happen. But uh, we keep going out there and competing, and uh, you know, tidal turn. It's just frustrating because we're having opportunities to to do some good things, and we're wasting some good opportunities. Well, the man they're leaning on tonight to pitch another dandy is right-hander Mike Leak. And you look at the last few starts that he's had, the numbers there, the last three starts in particular, Tom, he's given up four earned runs in those starts. I fully expect Leak to come out tonight, be very competitive, and have a solid start in this ball game against the Diamondbacks. Now they're facing a guy who has really struggled. So much so, Trevor Cahill, he lost his spot in the rotation. The only reason he's in there is because of injury. Yeah, they're coming over from the A's, he had a good year last year and a year before, but he has really had a tough time getting things going. They thought when they put him in the bullpen, things would start to get better but he has not put anything on the board from a starting perspective. All right so the Reds and the Diamondbacks about five minutes away from getting started when we return. Jim Day will join us down on the field and talk about what else is happening inside the National League Central Division. Brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. 
by Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And brought to you by Skyline Chili. Feeling good? It's Skyline time. Last night, they go 15 innings. Got to have some sore arms out there. My arm's feeling good. I got the curve. I got the knuckle. I got the two-seamer, and I'm ready to go. I'll be sitting out by the bullpen. Nice night, 71, 68, 64. Enjoy the game. Well, the Reds will play without Jay Bruce. He was placed on the bereavement list, which is a death in the family. We certainly send out our thoughts and prayers to Jay Bruce and his family. It's a minimum of three days on the bereavement list. And since the Reds went 15 innings last night and used up their bullpen, the guy they brought up was Curtis Parch, a reliever from Louisville. I'm Jim Day. The Reds, even though they have been struggling, are still in it with about two months left in the season because if you look at our Elk and Elk storylines brought to you by Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. National League Central Division standings, indeed, the Reds are six games back and one game under 500. But look, since the All-Star break, the National League Central was tearing it up before the break. Milwaukee just one game over. St. Louis 4-4. Four and four. Pittsburgh the only one playing relatively good baseball. The Reds record, as you know. And Chicago even 3-7. and seven. So despite the Reds struggling, still in it because everyone else struggling as well. When we come back, we got the lineups. We got first pitch. We've got all the play-by-play -play action of Cincinnati Reds baseball on your home of the Reds, Fox Sports Ohio. Tom and the Cowboy are on deck. produced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds I mean is there a more perfect weather night for anything not just Major League Baseball and it's July that's what I can't get over we're sitting here last night it is perfect weather it's perfect weather tonight I mean it feels like the middle of April or, or March for that matter. Well, we set an all time record cold temperature for yesterday during the nine hours last night, hitting 50 degrees. Kirk Gibson grew up in Michigan, so no big deal for him. Let's take a look at his lineup tonight, brought to you by Meyer. In Ciarte, Aaron Hill in the lineup at second base tonight. Paul Goldschmidt at first. Montero, the catcher. Trumbo in left field. Martin Prado at third. 
Gerardo Parra in right. D.D. Gregorius in second last night at shortstop tonight. And on the mound is Trevor Cahill starting it for the Reds in search of win number eight is right-hander Mike Leake. Leake trying to get things back on the right page. You know that start in San Diego in his home spot. Awfully difficult. Seemed to put him on a bad path. He's got to right the ship. Ball one low and away to the left-handed batting Ender Enciarte. 245 hitter with a home run and nine runs batted in. And a bouncer right at Pena. Doesn't get much easier than that. Two pitches and one out. Let's take a look at the Reds defensively behind Mike Leake. Presented by your four dealers. You probably heard the news by now. The transaction earlier today. The Reds placing right fielder Jay Bruce on the bereavement list. We don't know any further details. Our thoughts and prayers are with Jay and his family. Santiago will start at second base again Payne at first and it's ball one to the second baseman Aaron Hill Donald Lutz getting another start tonight out of left field You had to believe after seeing Hill pinch hit in last night's game that he'd be back in the lineup tonight Got hit on the hand but didn't seem to show much effects of it last night swinging the bat Hill has been a rock solid player for a long long time Primarily for many, many years with the Toronto Blue Jays. And a breaking ball is on the outside corner, a strike. Hill, 32 years old. Last year, battled a number of injuries, only played in 87 games. His last healthy year, which was 2012 with Arizona, he had 44 doubles, 26 home runs. And 85 runs batted in. During his career, he's hit as many as 36 home runs in a season and knocked in 108. So he is certainly a force when healthy in the lineup for whatever team he dons the uniform for. One and two. And that's strike three called, and he'll do it. He cuts this fastball back across the plate. It starts on the inside corner. Hill thinks it's going to sink inside, and it cuts back to the heart of the plate. Chris Cuccioni calls the balls and strikes tonight. Eric Cooper at first base. The crew chief is Tom Howlian out at second base, and Hal Gibson, the umpire, at third. Strike one to the Arizona All-Star first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. Reds come in one game under 500. We talked about it last night. It is the first time they've been below the 500 mark in over a month, all the way back to June the 21st when they beat Toronto to go to 36 and 37. Now they're 52 up, 53 down. But again, they lose no ground in the division because the Brewers continue to stumble along. Brewers losing. The opening game of their series in Tampa last night, and they're underway in the first inning tonight. We'll keep you posted. Goldschmidt gone swinging, and a good start for Mike Lee. He retires his side in order. Reds trying to go to work early on Trevor Cahill.
Price, presented by Meyer, shapes up as follows. Billy Hamilton, Ramon Santiago, and Todd Frazier. Devin Mezzarocco homered for their only run last night. Brian Pena at first, and Donald Lutzen left. The latter third of Skip Schumacher, Zach Cozart, Mike Lee. And one of the real mysteries in baseball here in this 2014 year would certainly be Diamondbacks right-hander Trevor Cahill. Sinker ball pitcher early in his career. He was getting wins like they were going out of style. Won eight, 18 ball games in an Oakland A uniform. Seemingly in double digits every year, but he has lost his sinker for some reason here in 2014, and that is his dominant pitch. Billy Hamilton behind strike one. The batting average at 271. Six home runs and 40 runs batted in. You know, we're going to check in with Jim Day in a little while about a, a fascinating conversation that Jim had with Reds third baseman Todd Frazier. You know, much was made when five Cincinnati Reds went to the All-Star game and not one of them had the last name of Phillips, Votto, or Bruce. And the youngsters that were there, two position players, of course, in Devin Mezzarocco and Todd Frazier. Billy Hamilton has put together the kind of season that looks like one day he will play in the All-Star game. But you know, without those veterans, especially Votto and, and especially Brandon Phillips, in this lineup each and every day. And how some of these guys have for the first time in their careers felt the pressure of trying to do something maybe they're not ready to do and we're off to the races. Billy Hamilton second base and he'll slam on the brakes right there. That's a good way to get it started here in the first inning. Flat fastball out over the plate. And you see Hamilton driving that top hand to the baseball just slaps it right down the left field line. Cahill has had a tremendous difficulty getting out left handed hitters almost hitting at a 400 clip against him. Well the Diamondbacks believe the Reds are going to ask Santiago to bunt no sign of a bunt on the first pitch. The Reds did the job when asked to do the job last night. It wasn't from failing to execute a bunt. It was failing to get the hits after successful sacrifices, and the Reds had three of those in the game here last night. Santiago takes one ball and one strike. Ramon came on to pinch hit. In the game last night in the 11th inning he drew a walk he put down one of those sacrifices in the 13th inning. And then he walked again in the 15th. Fly ball to center. And Enciarte makes a catch so. They don't ask Santiago to bunt and he is unable to advance Billy Hamilton. To third base one away in the inning. Well, here's Todd Frazier, and I talked about the conversation that Jim Day had with him earlier today. Jim, how about it? Well, I flat out asked Todd straight up that we talked so much about in the first half of the season. You didn't see those off-balance, unorthodox, unorthodox swings that we saw so much last year, but we've seen a ton of them since the All-Star break. So I asked him point blank, are they pitching you differently or what's going on? And he said, no, the pitches I'm getting, I'm fouling off, and I am simply swinging at pitches outside of the zone. I am a classic exa example of a guy trying to do too much with other guys out of the lineup. I've got that little guy on my shoulder talking to me, saying there's a guy on second base, like right now, I've got to be the guy to drive him in, and we're all pressing, we're all listening to that little guy on our shoulder, and we got to stop listening to him and just play within ourselves. That's great stuff, and I tell you, you got to admire the way uh, Frazier and Mezzarocco, both of them after the game, very poignant comments. Mezzarocco saying, we are paid to do a job, and we are not doing it, period, end. No excuses, no alibis, no nothing.
Well, that adrenaline can be your friend or it can be your ultimate enemy. And when you're putting too much pressure on yourself, we saw Frazier yesterday snap the bat at home plate in frustration after swinging and missing a, a pitch that he thought he should have hit. Drive into left field, and this will bring in Billy Hamilton. Throw will be cut off of Frazier. He told that little guy to beat it sitting on his shoulder. And it's 1 nothing Reds here in the first inning. I've been trying to tell that guy to beat it for about 50 years now. <laughs> well, Brian Price talked about this after the game last night. We don't need two run home runs with a runner at second base. We just need a base hit. And Frazier provides it right there. Sometimes you just got to make it as easy as you possibly can. See ball, hit ball, and forget about the situation. Easier said than done. So now Devin Mezzarocco clubbed his 17th home run of the season here last night. He has 49 runs batted in. What a pick in the dirt by Miguel Montero. He didn't have time to get in front of that ball. It was so far wide of the zone, and he picked it out of there cleanly. That was a fastball, a sinking fastball, and that shows you how much difficulty Cahill has right now with his release point. He's not sure where the ball is coming from. to Devin Mezzarocco Frazier over there with 15 stolen bases he's only been thrown out five times off speed there to have Mezzarocco way out in front Cahill ahead of the ball in two strikes Two on Devin Mezzarocco and a bouncer down to third. Prado to second. They turn it over, and that's a double play to end the first inning. But Hamilton, a leadoff double, scores on a single by Todd Frazier, and the Reds out to a 1 0 lead. Head-to-head -head challenge app you and your opponent each select four players and the person with the most points at the end of each game wins Head-to-head -head challenge is free to play so download right now Todd Frazier a run scoring single plating Billy Hamilton in the Reds opening inning 
So one nothing red legs behind Mike Leak. Diamond backs will have Miguel Montero, Mark Trumbo, and Martin Prado. That sounds like a deli. <laughs> Doesn't it? Maybe an Italian deli? Don't be talking about food now. Get me worked up. Ball one away to Miguel Montero. An all star for the second time this year. Has 11 home runs and leads all National League catchers with 59 runs batted in. Weekly hit down the third base line. And that is a foul ball. So what's the difference in an Italian deli and just a regular old deli? I mean, I was thinking specifically, you know, an Italian deli. You know, they've got the that's what the I'm saying. Cheeses and, the, and, the, and the, you know the the pastrami and the salami and the, you know all the good stuff. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. I know what you you know what I mean. Saw a few of those in our recent trip to New York, New York. Carnegie, they pile it up high. That place will carve you up now. Mm. One one pitch and a broken bat. Bat went almost as far as a ball. And I mean only by like a couple of feet. Santiago throws out Miguel Montero. Cut fastball right above the top hand and you can see the bat shatter in about 50 pieces. Oh, you're right, Tom. That bat almost reached Santiago at mm -hmm. second. Well, we had a nice little visit. One of the perks of being a Reds season ticket holder, among many, many, many things. As you know, from time to time, every couple of home stands, Cowboy, you, and, and my dad, and Jim Kelch, or Chris Welsh, and me, will all go, uh, you know, visit. And hang out with, you know, groups of 30, 35 at a time. And we had a really nice time before the ball game tonight. Conversation, took some pictures, signed some autographs. That's pretty cool. A couple of those questions, they were they were all right. I liked it. It was interesting. We were sitting in that room with some season ticket holders that have had them since going back to the days of Crosley Field. And then others who just became season ticket holders this year for the first time. So you've got all kinds of uh, spread age wise. You've got you know, young families in there, or, or at least maybe some kids out of college. You know, maybe they got a good job to start it off with, and, and they're going half and half maybe with somebody else on a season or splitting it up four ways, whatever they might be doing. And you've got some folks that have been around for a while, seen a lot of baseball. Did you know that your dad wanted to be a Broadway? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Trumbo, a, a check swing and a miss. Leak is fan three of the first five Diamondbacks in the game. Curveball's been a pretty good pitch for Leak here so far in the early going. Everything hard with that cutting fastball and sinking fastball. Well, watch the bottom fall out of this curveball. Takes a lot of speed off of it. Trumbo starts and can't stop. So now Martin Prado, a 276 batter, five home runs and 42 runs batted in. And there's a strike on the outside corner. Brewers and the Rays are scoreless at the end of one tonight. Cardinals had another day off yesterday. They'll open a series out at Petco Park in San Diego. There's a two hopper to the shortstop, Cozart. And Mike Leak with back to back perfect innings. Reds lead after one and a half in Cincinnati, one nothing.
Well, you know the drill for Red. It's a home run off that Toyota sign. In tonight's game, Norman Pasley of Middletown, Ohio, will win that new Tundra. And you can register for your chance to win. Just stop by your Cincinnati and or Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. Reds won. Arizona nothing. Trevor Cahill climbs the mound to face Brian Pena, Donald Lutz, and Skip Schumacher here in the Reds' second inning. Well, who would ever have thought that the Reds would have their starting catcher and their backup catcher hitting four and five on the same day in the same lineup? And we'll have a play first base. Holy Mac. IGS bringing the energy. That would be Brian Payne against these Arizona Diamondbacks. How about those numbers? Of course, a lot of those, most of those, piled up before he joined the Cincinnati Reds. For whatever reason, the Detroit Tigers and the Arizona Diamondbacks play each other every year. It's kind of like they call it their natural rival. I can't think of anything more unnatural. There's a ground ball down to first exactly. base. I mean, the only tie, and of course, a uh, They've been doing this long before Kirk Gibson arrived as manager. For those of you not old enough to remember, believe me when I tell you, when you see him now, he's, he's much thinner. Obviously, he's much older. But when that guy right there used to put on the spikes in baseball, and when he would put on the cleats in football, a receiver for Michigan State, he was some kind of player. He was a tough out now. I can remember facing him when he was with the Dodgers. I was just a baby with the Giants back then. I'm thinking that's Kurt Gibson. <laughs> Better come on with it, bro. You know, we brought it up when we were in Arizona, Cowboy. And you, you were over on the radio side. Chris and I were working on the television side. You played against a guy. I used to love watching him as a as a baseball and a football player. It's hard to believe it's the same guy. Because he infrequently now shows any emotion. That went off the end of the bat into shallow right center. It'll fall in a hit for Payne. Or for Donald Lux, I beg your pardon. So one out, one on here in the red second inning. But when he played. The fire and the passion and the tenacity and the intensity that Gibson had, you would never believe it's the same man who sits in that third base dugout now. Well, there, there are differences when you can make an impact as a player versus a manager or as a coach. And when you know that you have a direct impact on the guys around you with not only the bat, but with your feet and your glove. That passion tends to come out big time, and his did. There are some managers that carry that to the manager's chair. I know Lou Pinella was a very fiery player and a very fiery manager. He was so fiery, I can remember being out in San Francisco, and he picked up first base and carried it all the way down to the tunnel and on into the manager's office on the visitor side. Yeah, of course, a lot of Red fans remember him doing the same thing here uh, in a game against the Chicago Cubs one night, throwing the base not once but twice before being thrown out of the game. But it's almost like the game of baseball and the entire industry of sports almost frowns on those kind of guys now. And I'll tell you what, I, you know, I'd probably lose if, if I bet on it. But I would bet on it. That's the kind of guy that fans want to see. But there's so much of making sure I'm not going to make any waves and not going to ruffle correct. any feathers. Yeah. You know, it's it's not only in baseball. You're even seeing it more and more now in, in football. And if there's ever a game 
where guys tend to let their emotions hang out, man, it would be that game. Well, any sport is a game of passion. If you don't have it, you're not going to be successful. Now, how you channel that passion is probably going to determine how successful you are. One and two on Skip Schumacher. Speaking of passion, this guy at the plate is a very passionate guy. Yes, Schumacher. He is. I don't know that he ever expected to be playing on a daily basis when he came to the Reds, but then again, neither did Brian Pinion. It's part of the necessity. Swing is Schumacher. And that's a second out here in the Reds' second inning and the first strikeout of the game for Trevor Cahill. Arizona on defense presented by your four dealers. Gregorius played second base last night back to his natural position at shortstop here tonight. Gerardo Parra back in the lineup after an off day. Likewise for Aaron Hill after getting hit with that pitch. And now the number eight batter in the Reds order, Zach Cozart looks at ball one low. 222 the average, two home runs, 22 runs batted in for Cozart. Every number two, including the number on his back. <laughs> it's part of his numbers right now. And naturally you would think. Well, maybe you ought to change that number to three. I hear you. And he's batting in inning number two with two outs in the inning. Deuce is wild. Boy, is it ever. Reds in front, one nothing. Wow. That went all the way to the backstop. We'll send Lutz into scoring position on the wild pitch by Cahill. And that's not the first pitch that we've seen that has just gone totally clear of the catcher. A breaking ball. That ball would have been behind a left-handed batter. Two balls and a strike. And a breaking ball and a dandy by Cahill there. And even the count of two balls, two strikes. So we truly are twos across the board now. Mike Leak waits in the on deck circle, a full count on Kozai. Just tell by the body language of Trevor Cahill, he is not comfortable at all. Release point everywhere. And a broken bat roller. Gregorius throws, and the runner is out at first base. Ball made over there by Eric Cooper. And the question is will the Reds want to have another look at this? You be the judge. Safe. More than likely, they're going to take a look at this one. You know, it was interesting on that play, Tom. The Diamondbacks players didn't even leave the field after the call. No, they did. It's like normally, nobody knew how many outs there were. Normally, they are off the field and into the dugout, but none of the guys left the field. Even they thought the call should have been safe. It's pretty interesting. Well, the crew chief is the second base umpire, Tom Hallion. He will join the umpire who made the call, Eric Cooper, and put the headphones on and check in back in New York, New York.
Tom, you look up and down the the rosters of both of these teams. There are a lot of injuries, not only for the Reds, but the Diamondbacks have had five different pitchers have Tommy John surgery that have been on their big league roster this year. That is utterly amazing. And they're big guys. Yes. Tommy John, that's a year and a half. Wow. I gotta believe this is gonna be overturned. And the runner is safe at first base. It is indeed overturned. Clear and convincing evidence that the call on the field was incorrect. So Lutz advances on to third base. Cozart safe on an infield hit at first base. Ryan Price retains a challenge in the first base dugout. And it took one minute and 25 seconds to come to that verdict. So now Leak runners on the corners, two are out. For whatever reason, Leak has not been nearly the hitter this year that he has been in his entire Major League career. Only five hits this entire season in 43 at bats. He's seeing a lot more pitches like he did that first one breaking balls, change ups, sliders. I, mean, I, I look back to that ball that he hit out of Garrett Cole earlier this season, a 97 mile an hour fastball, and he hit it out of left field like he knew it was coming. Pitchers don't do that. You're doing that, you're getting a slider next time. And that's how people face him now. They treat him. Just like a normal hitter. Ken Phelps, who played in the major leagues for a long, long time, had an excellent career. Big slugger. He handles the Diamondbacks radio analyst job. He, like Leak, is an Arizona State University alum. And makes his home in Arizona. He used to watch Leak play every game during his collegiate career. And talked about what an offensive force he was on the days whether he was pitching or not pitching. As well as he hits with a wooden bat, I can only imagine with the aluminum. One and two on Lee. And those were the days when they were still allowing you to use that aluminum. And the way the, the, the compact aluminum that uh, that they're not letting you use anymore. Yeah, they don't have the they didn't have the BB core bats back then. Exit speed has been drastically reduced. One and two on leak. And a grounder knocked down, but a fair ball. And that'll be an RBI single by Leak to make it a 2 nothing ball game. So the challenge by Brian Price. Call overturned allowing Cozart to reach safely. Continues the inning for this. Well, watch Leak turn on this ball. Down the line. Even with the dive, Prado could not get to it. That ball is smoked. That's why you throw in breaking balls. Now Billy Hamilton for the second time in as many innings Hamilton doubled down the left field line leading off the game and scored the first run of the night on a base hit by Todd Frazier. Just have to hope that this early run production for the Reds can settle them down a little bit from a mental standpoint as far as the hitters are concerned.
one and two now on Billy Hamilton. Tonight marks the first time since the All-Star break where the Reds have scored in back-to-back -back innings. Up and away, two and two on Billy Hamilton. Of course, the Reds have not scored more than three runs in a game since the All-Star break. And already two of them here tonight. Hamilton trying to make it more than that with two on and two out. And the 2-2 pitch. Struck him out to end the inning. But an RBI single by Mike Leak drives in Donald Lutz. 2 nothing. Reds in front. Sports Ohio. I'm Jim Day out here on the Cincinnati Bell Riverboat deck. Uh, proud once again to have our periodic visit from the CEO and president of the Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. She is Linda Antis. It is great to see you again. Great to be here tonight. I want to thank you once again for another year of uh, commercials, trying to highlight what's going on in the Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. We've called it Jim's Day Off this year, and you let me go to the, the aquarium again, and we've done the Moorline Logger House all over the banks, and it's been very, very fun. Well, you know you make a great visitor. I think I told you that last time, but you're you're proving it every single time you do your spot. And you know, I wanted to tell you, I took my segue over here today, because I understand you love the Segway Tours. I love the Segway Tours, and if you're, if you're down around the downtown area, you certainly need to check it out. If I had one, I may never walk again. Uh, but, Linda, you always got your pulse on what's going on here in Cincinnati and northern Kentucky. What's going on right now coming up for people to get involved in? Well, this is a very exciting weekend coming up. Um, you probably remember last year when the inaugural presentation of Luminosity. Yes. Beautiful presentation of our symphony and the gorgeous animated projections against Music Hall. Well, it's happening again this weekend, and that's the exciting good news. The little bit tough news is the tickets are already sold out, but guess what? You can go to Fountain Square and on the large screen there or at Riverbend, you can actually watch the Luminosity Show that happens right at Washington Park, which I think you've been in very recently. I just visited. <laughs> yes, that's your next one. I, a new surprise for the visitors to hear. So that's happening um, as well. Um, we also have some really special things that are about to 
make their final debut, and that is Diana, a celebration at the Cincinnati Museum Center. This is the last appearance of this special exhibit, which of course is about Diana, the, the uh, Princess of Wales. And so many beautiful artifacts, her wedding gown, all kinds of memories, fun for the whole family. And it's, it's leaving August 17th, but it will be nowhere else in the world because it will go back to the Suns in London. So you must get to the Cincinnati Museum Center and take a look at Diana, a celebration. And I would encourage everyone to go on to CincinnatiUSA.com because I know you've revamped the website. And that's kind of a one-stop shop to, for everyone to find out. And you can get some free Reds tickets on there, right? Absolutely. You can get half-price Reds tickets, which when you book your hotel room, you get half-price on Reds tickets. And next week, of course, it's the Ohio <laughs> Cup, which is a big deal. A week from now, we've got two dates with Cleveland in town, so there's another homestand. Book your half-price tickets, but take a look at the new website. Inspiring stories, beautiful visuals. You can find yourself anything that tickles your fancy, and CincinnatiUSA.com is your place to do that. Well, they have their pulse on the city. There's no question about that. And I know you have a special message to a couple people, right? I do. I want to say a special hello to my mom and dad, Dee Dee and Earl Stolf. Hi, Western Hills watching, watching us on the game. And then also, hey, guys in the booth, Tom Cowboy. How you doing? Uh, hello there, Lenta. I'm just so disappointed that you are not up here in the booth with us tonight. Jim, please tell her we miss her up here. They're disappointed that you're not in the booth, and they miss you very, very much up here. And uh, we just appreciate everything because there's so much to do in this area that people don't know of, and uh, we appreciate you to promoting one of the greatest cities in America. It is. Wonderful region, beautiful night here at the ballpark. Come for the Reds. Stay for more fun. There you go. Linda Antis, boys, back to you. She is the best. There's no doubt about it. And of course, CincinnatiUSA.com is our partner on the Reds caravan every year. They make it possible to, to get out all around Reds country. And we thank Linda and her staff for all their wonderful work. First base runner of the game for the Arizona Diamondbacks, a one out triple by their shortstop, D.D. Gregorius. And that'll bring Trevor Cahill to the mound. And the Reds are going to bring the infield in with one out. Cahill one hit in eight at bats. Strike one on Cahill. Cahill's only hit this year a double. You almost hope he hits it to one of the infielders and Gregorius takes off and you've got to play at the plate. That leaves you with Cahill at first. Instead of Enciarte coming to the plate with two outs and the runner at third. Oh, and one to Cahill. Cahill only had four hits in 49 at bats last year. That's a .082 batting average. Of course, he came up in the American League where he didn't get a chance to hit until he became a Diamondback three years ago. Straight up in the air. And playable, it appears, in foul ground. It is for Frazier. And that's a second out here in the Diamondbacks third. Cowboy, I know that uh, you've already pointed it out. It appears early in this game, and it's still early. We're only in the third inning. But this is far better stuff that Leak is featuring tonight than we've seen him his last four or five games. It is, Tommy. He's down in the strike zone. He's using both sides of the plate, which we're accustomed to, to seeing, but he's using the curveball more, especially the first time through the lineup. It'll be interesting to see how he approaches the Diamondbacks hitters. They're very aggressive. They swing the bats. They don't walk a lot. Matter of fact, they have the least amount of walks in the National League. Here's Enciarte trying to Bunt his way on, and well, when he bunted through that pitch, Mezzarocco had an inkling to fire down and try to get D.D. Gregorius. It was rather interesting. A two-out bunt attempt with a runner at third base. Enciarte bounced out to Pena his first time up. And a pitch like that, that location of that pitch right there. And we've seen a number of them already tonight. A lot of broken bats, the movement in on the hands. That pitch right there, Enciarte's just not going to hit it. No, the only thing you can do with this ball is pull it foul 
or snap your bat in about a thousand pieces and ground it out to second. Well, what Leak is doing, Tom, he's starting that fastball right on the inside corner and then it cuts off. Then he'll come back with the very same location and instead of the ball cutting in, it'll run back to the inside corner. It's all about finger pressure. Oh, and two. And a fastball up and away, a ball and two strikes. A runner at third, Reds lead 2 0. We're in the third. Diamondbacks 46 wins against 60 losses. I mean, they're buried inside that National League West. The Dodgers won again last night. The Giants lost again last night. On the ground. And the sure-handed Santiago throws on to end the inning. Nice work by Leak after the one-out triple. A 2-0 Reds lead. Right now. Hal McCoy standing by for your questions on our game day live page. Check out the catch in the interview Jim Day had last night with a fan. Well, oh, what a catch it was. Where do the Reds rank in the most recent MLB power rankings? It's all brought to you by 1 800 Safe Auto Drive Safe Spend Less. Here was that grab last night. This young lady down the right field line brought her glove. And take a look at this snag right here. Man, it's getting it done. Not only did she bring her glove to the ball game, she caught the ball and it was a backhanded catch over the wall as well. And if you weren't with us, Jim Day as Santiago grounds out to begin the Reds third. Reds lead here 2 0. If you weren't with us, Jim Day raced out there and, and had an interview with that little girl and her dad. I mean, it wasn't, what, seven, eight minutes after she made that catch? A member of the Red Staff came down and presented her with a baseball signed by the player who hit the ball, the man who digs it at the plate right now, Todd Frazier. I think she was more happy about getting the signed baseball than she was catching the foul ball. Frazier hit that ball right on the screws, but right at the second baseman shifted over near the bag. And that's two pitches and two outs. The program, by the way, where they give out certificates and then the, the fan in the case last night uh, getting the autographed baseball. The gentleman who who oversees uh, a number of areas, including the one we had today with the season ticket holders. Making sure all those folks are taken care of and the different perks that come along with being a season ticket holder. That's Craig Warman. 
And that's known as the Reds way. Taking care of a fan after making a play like that. I thought that was pretty cool. Signed baseball from the guy that just hit you the foul ball that you caught. Really cool. Two and one to count on Devin Mesoraco. Two and two on Devin who bounced into a double play ending the first inning and it was on a ground ball to third. He hits another one down to third and it's a one two three inning a scoreless inning first of the night for Trevor Cahill runs in front two nothing. Cincinnati Reds take on the tribe, the Cleveland Indians coming to town. August 6th and 7th. On the 6th, the first 25,000 fans receive a J. Bruce bobblehead presented by the Ohio Lottery. Log on to Reds.com slash tickets or call 513-381-REDS. You can also visit select Kroger locations for tickets. First bit swinging, Aaron Hill. Barehanded by Frazier and a throw in the dirt. And he had a little more time. But perhaps he could have set his feet there after the barehanded pickup. And he'll avoid to begin the inning. You're exactly right, Tom. Frazier got the ball barehanded, and he had a whole lot more time than what I think he realized. will be charged with an error on that play. And now Paul Goldschmidt. Reds lead 2-0. Goldschmidt first pitch swing. Boy, in the games the Reds have played against Arizona this year, Goldschmidt has done more of that than I can remember since he came to the big leagues and even watching him against other teams on television. You agree? I agree. And I think that you look at this offense and there obviously are Ingredients for the Diamondbacks that are missing, very similar to the Reds. The guys that that responsibility falls on feel the pressure a whole lot more. And I'm sure Goldsmith is guilty of that, just like Frazier, Mazzarocco, and Billy Hamilton on the Red side. One out, one on, and now Montero. He bounced out to Ramon Santiago, the second baseman, his first time up. Leak a long look over his shoulder and misses away to Montero. What an incredible weather night again in Cincinnati. Temperature the high today, 74. 
after a record low last night. They're expecting another record low tonight in the history of the city. And it's been like that by and large this entire summer outside of a, a handful of days here, three, four days there. By the time we hit the 13th inning last night, you pretty much needed a jacket if you were in the seat. I overheard a couple of folks today uh, at UDF talking about that exact same thing. Two and other count on Montero. And there's a strike on the outside corner. All right, that's the second reference you made to stuff that I like. Talked about Italian deli earlier. Now you're going the ice cream route. Trying to stir me up. All right, but after a ball game like tonight, okay, hopefully it's not another 15 in a game. <laughs> hopefully the Reds can come away on the upside rather than the downside like the 2 1 loss last night. If you walked in the door, and all of a sudden, God has made appear sitting on your kitchen counter a whole pile of Italian meats and cheeses and peppers and all that good stuff. Or already put together that famous, is it seven or eight scoops? Eight. Eight scoops that you have devoured many, many times, all at one time. They were talking about after the game, right? Right after the game, you get back home, you walk in the door, you take off the tie, you take off the sport coat, you get down to the T-shirt, and you're ready to just kind of hang out, right? That's all exactly right. how I do it. You got one on left, and you got one on the right. But you're only allowed to have one? I want the ice cream. That <laughs> didn't take long. Mint Oreo cookie, and they're fixing to come out with it. <laughs> Leak. What a play, and the throw is down the line. They're going to hold the runner. Aaron Hill at third base. That appeared to be Frazier's ball more so than Leak's ball. Of course, Mike's just going to get the ball. But his throw had his momentum going away from the play. I would imagine that'll be an infield hit and then a throwing error on Leak, allowing the runner to go to second and Hill to go to third. Yep. Leak got his feet set. He just couldn't quite get the body under control. Well, you just don't see these Reds make two errors in an inning very often. And they've both been on the throws. All right now to be Trumbo. He struck out swinging his first time up all of a sudden because of a couple of errors in this inning. The Diamondbacks are a hit away from tying this game. Foul territory, and that one will reach a seat about seven rows out of play. You can pretty much bet your bottom dollar Trumbo is up there to swing. He's only got six walks and 125 at bats. He is a hacking. Trumbo and a swing and a miss. Hard sinker down and in there on Trumbo and it came up empty. See where the location of that pitch was down below the knees, right around the tops of the ankles. Use that aggressiveness from the hitter to your advantage if you're on the mound. Now you got to put him away. 0 oh and 2, second and third for the Diamondbacks and one out. And he does put him away, getting him to chase down and away. Same pitch he struck him out on back in the second inning, two out. Perfect setup of pitches. You run the fastball in early, you come back with it, and look at where this curveball is. I mean, we're talking a foot off the plate, but you came in hard twice, and it really eliminates the vision of the outside corner for the batter. Now to be Martin Prado. One more big out to go from Mike Leake to maintain this 2 nothing lead. Runners at second and third. 
Fastball the inside corner to get ahead strike one. You made the comment earlier Tom about the location of Leak and the stuff that he has tonight everything down in the zone when he's missed he's missed low or off the plate. Nothing in one on Prado. Leak working out of the stretch. And a dribbler down a third baseline, but that got a piece of Prado's foot before it rolled up to third. So that is a foul ball. To get ahead 0-2. Prado really trying to get inside the ball and shoot it the other way. You can see his hands come in. But that sinking fastball runs right up underneath his knuckles. Third, Miguel Montero leads out at second base. The Reds in front, two nothing. Two are out, and the 0-2 pitch tried to get him to chase like Trumbo did, though that ball was not nearly as far away or down, and able to put the bat on the ball and foul it off his Prado. Prado just got a piece of that. His body there was going back towards third base. He was looking in for another fastball. Once more, Leak trying to put away Martin Prado and the Diamondbacks, and a little pop up in a shallow center field, and it'll be Santiago. What a play by Ramon Santiago. Brandon Phillips esque, if you will. He went out there and got it in traffic. Brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota for over 30 Toyota offers. Visit buyatoyota.com. And enjoy bonus Thursdays at B Dubs. What a steal. Specially priced bonus wings all day. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. And T Mobile, Tuesday Night Baseball. Another very good crowd here at Great American Ballpark on this Tuesday night. We had nearly 31,000 last night. Looks like better than that tonight. Now the Reds scored in each of the first two innings. Look at that guy. <laughs> Holy Moses. Got his daddy's phone. And look at those shades. Prime time. The future's so bright, he's got to wear shades. That's the way the little cowboy used to look one day. Didn't Stop it. I didn't even know what sunglasses <laughs> were. 
KL through. There's a rocket on the second pitch of the inning off the bat of Pena right at the second baseman Hill. KL threw 16 pitches in the first. He threw 29 pitches in the second inning. And the Reds went down in order on seven pitches in the third. Cahill has never been a big strikeout guy. He has been a ground ball machine from the time he stepped onto the big league diamond with the Oakland A's. But those sinkers that stay up in the strike zone, they get hit like that one thing you just got. Bullets. Donald Lutz a batter. He singled and scored in the second inning. That ball fouled out of play. Boy, he takes a man's cut, doesn't he? Yeah, and if you're if you're Donald Lutz in this situation, Tom, this is not pressure. This is opportunity. And that's how you have to look at it. That's why you, you hear so many times folks talking about the game at this level being a mental game. It's how you think about your performance for that given day. If you put pressure on yourself, then you're only going to fail. To the count on Donald Lutz. You're right, Tom. This guy's got some serious power. And that strike three called. Good movement on that fastball that caught the inside corner. Third strikeout of the game for K Hill. Well, right now, we invite you to tweet your photos using hashtag OhioFanPhoto. And perhaps we'll show it during an upcoming game. It's brought to you by TNT, and we'll have one a little bit later on tonight. Two up, two down for Schumacher. He struck out swinging his first time up. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Red's got a leadoff double in the first by Billy Hamilton. He scored on a single by Todd Frazier. Lutz and Cozart singled in the second inning, and Mike Leak. Knocked in a run with a single up the third base line. League has pitched out of jams in each of the last two innings with a runner at third and fewer than two out. Two and oh, the count on Skip Schumacher. Straight up in the air, left center field, that'll handled by Enciarte, and that's all for the Reds. Back to back perfect innings. We're off to the fifth. Reds two, Arizona nothing.
Wraparound, weeknights at 10 on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. I'm Jim Day over here by the Diamondbacks dugout, and one guy that's not in this dugout is former Red Bronson Arroyo, out with Tommy John surgery. I was able to talk to Bronson yesterday, and he hates the fact that he couldn't come to Cincinnati, and it's something new that he's rehabbing on. Uh, but he says it's going well, and believe it or not, guys, he had a torn UCL, obviously. The UCL is the ligament that if you tear it, that's when you need Tommy John surgery. This has been documented, but worth revisiting. He made six starts with a torn UCL. Told me he topped out at 82 miles per hour and ended up going three and two in those starts with a 3.99 ERA, but in his last two starts gave up just two earned runs in 12 innings. That's with a torn UCL. I can't imagine the pain in that. He also told me that before the injury, he planned on pitching just a couple more years, but he said, now the elbow injury, I'm mad about it. I'm pitching five more years, and if anyone can do it into his 40s, it would be Bronson Arroyo. There is no doubt in my mind. It's funny you said that, Jim, because after I heard that he was going to, to sadly undergo that Tommy John surgery, that if everything went well for Bronson Arroyo, it would not surprise me, Cowboy, if that guy is indeed pitching five years from now and pitching effectively. Well, the, the thing that Bronson understands is the on and off of pitching. It's not about how hard you throw. It's not about how big the breaking ball snaps or how much you do with it. It's the in and out and the changing of speeds. And he just has that unique ability to read the hitter when it's time to take a little off and when it's time to put a little on. And he had made such a, a tremendous impact already on the damn Diamondbacks team and especially the pitchers. I mean, you hear the, the people talk about having him around. And remember, he missed a lot of spring training because that back problem that, that had shown up from time to time through the years with the Reds flared up during spring training. But they miss him so much, and, and Lord knows we miss him here in Cincinnati as well. What a what a great guy. Well, there, there's no substitute for a veteran presence, especially a guy that has had the success and, and learned the lessons in life that Bronson Arroyo had. Two and two to count. And a, what a play, Santiago again! Wow. Talk about veteran stability. Well, Santiago is proving that off the bench. It's back to back innings that he's had phenomenal plays. You said Brandon Phillips esque. Well, multiply that times two. Mm -hmm. Now, Cowboy, you use that word, opportunity. I mean, for three months of this season, Ramon Santiago, you would never know he was on this team. He never played a spot start here and there. Maybe would come on for defense every blue moon for one reason or another. And then all of a sudden, when he got the chance to play, he made the most of it. And ever since then, he, I think he has taken that opportunity to prove to the Reds that Maybe not an everyday player, but certainly a guy you really like to have on your ball club, and you're glad you brought him in. He has definitely opened my eyes. And I thought in spring training, I thought you could knock the bat out of his hand. And he's proved that wrong. He's played phenomenal defense, and the Reds have asked him to play all over the infield. This is what you really want to have from a veteran bench player. And that's strike three to Cahill, and that'll end the inning. One, two, three for Lee. Five strong shutout innings for Lee. Two nothing. Reds in front.
Parker, a roll as Chapman. Unbelievable. Struck out the side for the fourth time in seven games last night. For the 15 fastballs, the average speed was 102 miles per hour. And take a look at that last move. 121 batters have faced Chapman this year. He has struck out 66 of them. Now, Jim Day had a chance to catch up with Brian Pena before the game today. And, Jim, uh, that conversation centered primarily on Aroldis Chapman. It certainly did, and he was just raving about Aroldis Chapman. And it's really unbelievable what we're watching right now. And he said some people are chosen to make history, to come here and play the game and make history. And in my opinion, we are watching it right now. Aroldis Chapman is so special. And he says, jokingly, he says he jumps in every picture that he can of anyone taking a picture of Aroldis Chapman because he says years from now, they're going to say, who is that guy with the great Aroldis Chapman? Oh, that's Pena. So he's trying to jump into every picture he can with Aroldis Chapman. He loves catching Chapman. How about that? Zach Kozard leads off the Reds' bottom half of the fifth inning and pops it up into right field on the first pitch. And that's one pitch and one out. Well, the Reds are just there swinging early and often after putting, what, five hits together, two runs through the first nine batters of the game. And now all of a sudden, Cahill has retired eight in a row. And he's thrown less than 15 pitches to do it. Leak. Two and two. over the mound be handled by D.D. Gregorius he throws out Mike Lee and there are two away in the inning a reminder coming up a little bit later on we'll have our Miller time moment as we do every night and it's brought to you by Miller Light. Now Cowboy are you a little bit perplexed by all of a sudden the Reds going up there and and committing outs in a very short amount of time after good success against this guy early. Well, I think when you when you look at what Cahill is doing now versus what he did earlier in the ball game, his pitches are down, and he's still getting movement on the fastball. Earlier he was up, and the Reds were very aggressive, and rightly so. Now he's starting to get sync on the ball and starting to keep the ball down around the, the kneecaps. When you start the ball down there and you have sync with it, you're going to get a lot of ground balls. And this is what really brought this guy to the big leagues. Well, it's easy to forget what success this guy had when he first came to the big leagues. I mean, he looked like one of the, the really bright young pitching stars in all of Major League Baseball. That one dribbled foul. And I don't think that's overstating it. No, I, I think you're right on the money. When he won those 18 ball games out in Oakland, I think everybody started to take notice. Well, and he already at 2.9. That was his first or his second full year in the big leagues. Like his first full year in the big leagues, he won 10 games. He came back the next year. His ERA was right at four. And let's face it, in the American League, that's not that bad. He went 12 and 14, got traded to Arizona, won 13 games with an ERA at 3.7. And even last year, when they didn't score runs for him, his ERA started in the threes, and he went eight and ten. But this year has Rough just start. been a disaster. Now 
Bouncing ball right side and that'll be Goldschmidt and the Reds for the third straight inning are retired in order on our way to the six Reds two Diamondbacks nothing. Scoring on the Frazier single in the first inning, the league single in the second inning, and Mike has been dynamite on the mound. Through five innings, he's allowed only two base hits. And it's a top of the order here, the Diamondback sixth inning. Breaking ball, a strike to Ender Enciarte. He pulled the ball seemingly every time up last night. And he has hit a couple of ground balls to the right side tonight. One to Pena and the other to Santiago. How about that pick? One away. So after the one sloppy inning where the Reds had a couple of throwing errors, their defense is tightened up in a hurry. You just had a feeling coming into this ball game that this was going to be a a much better start and a much better Mike League than what we've seen in the last three starts. Too much of a competitor and too good of stuff to let things linger. Second baseman Aaron Hill and it's two balls and no strikes. Hill has struck out and reached on the throwing in by Todd Frazier. And a dribbler foul, two and one on Aaron Hill. Hill's name has been bantied about in rumors. Leading up to the trade deadline. Big time. And you got to believe if healthy, there would be some teams that would be interested in Aaron Hill as he's hit with a pitch. Fastball that ran in on him and not sure where it got him. We talked about him getting hit by a pitch a couple of days ago. Just got the shirt. Yeah. Maybe it pays to have it untucked a little bit. And it really pays not to have a boiler. <laughs> There's a line drive caught by Frazier. No, he dropped it. So they get the force out on the lead running. And Goldschmidt running all the way, taking nothing for granted, is safe at first. 
pretty good awareness by Paul Goldschmidt. He never broke stride. He was hustling all the way. A lot of times you hit that ball, you see the guy dive for it, it goes in the glove, you throw your hands up, oh, you got to be kidding me, and you stop running. If he had stopped, that was an easy double play. So two down in the inning, and now Montero, he has 11 home runs, had an infield hit, had a little roller by the mound that Leak fielded over on the third base side, and then had an errant throw down the first base line, but Leak pitched out of that jam. Diamondbacks had runners at second and third after that throwing error with only one out of the fourth inning, but Trumbo struck out swinging, and Prado hit that little flare into shallow center that Santiago went out and made a marvelous play on. Taking away a hit and preventing any Arizona runs. You know, the Diamondbacks have all their new brass and their old brass, for that matter, current brass in town. Tony Larusa now their president of baseball operations. He was inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame, as you know, on Sunday, and was on a plane here to Cincinnati to start talking about where they're headed. One man left, middle of the six, Reds in front, two nothing. Ohio fan photo. Here's tonight's fan photo of the game brought to you by AT&T. David, thank you very much. Good looking couple right there. They'll probably be tuned in tomorrow night for an all new Reds Weekly and you can find out how a GPS device could soon be part of baseball. Catch up with the nasty boys. What are they up to? And find out how you could play fantasy football with your favorite Reds player. All on Reds Weekly Wednesday at 6. On Fox Sports Ohio. Now look at I don't think that's the same guys before, is it? Yes, it is. It is? He just has a pacifier now. He's still on that same phone and still looking through those same shades. So take a look at that. You got the Reds hat, a pair of shades, you got the Baba working. You know, the pacifier. You got the the, the, the cell phone. Looks like he's doing etch a sketch on that thing. It's about to end up in a Reds dugout here in a few minutes. <laughs> and the Reds jersey. That kid is dialed in. I just got a tweet from that little guy. <laughs> you did? Yeah. <laughs> tweeted me. <laughs> Hashtag I'm cool. He is cool. He really is. His dad would love to hide that thing for a while, but it would be chaos. Oh, you know, that's right. The whole Reds dugout would be turned around looking up into the stands wondering what had happened. Reds lead 2 nothing. Santiago 
Nick Tye will be followed by Frazier and Mezzarocco. It's one of those, here you go, little buddy. I'm watching the game. <laughs> you play on this phone a little bit. He has no idea what's coming seven years from now. I, I, I can't take my eyes off him down there. Now that I know where he's sitting, there's a ground ball down to first base, and that'll be the first down. I mean, Cahill is on a roll, man. That's 11, 12, no, 11 in a row retired by Cahill. The Reds scored two runs, had five hits, all coming the first time through the batting order. They do not have a base runner. The second and now the start of a third time through the batting order. Well, maybe tonight they'd snap out of this drought. Well, he started out, Cahill did, all over the place with his release point. Here in the last couple of innings, he has really dialed it in. Same spot, whether it be breaking ball or the sinking fastball. And even mixed in a few change-ups to go with it. Two and one to Todd Frazier. He knocked in the first run of the game, a single in the left field that scored Billy Hamilton from second base. And he'll dump this one into right field, a base hit. So that ends a string of 11 straight retired by Cahill, a one out single by Frazier. You can catch the Reds at Fox Sports Ohio's coverage during this entire year with MLB.tv Premium. You can visit Reds.com for more details. The Rays are batting in the last of the sixth inning. They are trailing the Milwaukee Brewers one to nothing. That was a two to one final last night. The Rays scoring twice against Kyle Loesch in the sixth inning and hanging on to win. There goes Frazier. And a throw to second is too high. And that's stolen base number 16 for Todd Frazier. No chance for Montero there. Big leg kick. From Cahill, the ball's up in the strike zone. Even though it backs Mezzarocco away and gives Montero a clear sideline, awfully slow to the plate. Yeah, Frazier runs very well. Great sense of anticipation as he gets that walking lead off first base. You're taught early on in your career, don't let a base runner have a walking lead. Make him stop. A big fella like Frazier can put some speed together when you give him a head start. Sure. One and one to count on Devin Mezzarocco. Devin over two has hit a pair of brown balls at the third baseman Prado, the first of which turned into a double play. Devin's getting over the top of that sinking fastball. You've either got to let it go or you've got to get your hands inside of it. One and two on Mezzarocco. So one part about throwing a Two seamer or a sinker doesn't always do the same thing. It's a different pitch every time. May look the same. It's got a little something different to it. One and two on Devin Mezzarocco. Frazier out at second base with one out. And a ground ball to the glove side for Gregorius. He's an outstanding defender. And he'll throw out Mezzarocco on the third. Frazier, two away. And now Brian Pena coming up. And you've seen the ball pretty well off of Cahill his first two times up. Hit that ball sharply to Goldschmidt his first time and then bullet to Hill last time up.
Reds would love to add to this 2 nothing lead, but a two-out knock from Pena. And a fastball runs in. The Rays have tied up Milwaukee in the bottom of the sixth inning. 1-1 one, one there. Cardinals later in San Diego. Pirates later against slumping San Francisco. Giants have lost five in a row. How about the turnaround for Tampa Bay? It's thrown a little wrinkle in the trade market. And online about that, all of a sudden they are just seven games behind the front running Orioles. But they're only what, four and a half behind Toronto for second. Sinking liner into left field. A base hit by Pena. And that will score Frazier to give the Reds a 3 nothing lead. That's a really good piece of hitting right there. Pena pulled the two pitches earlier. This ball up and out over the plate. And you can see Pena really raised the shoulders and try to get on top of that ball so he doesn't pop it into the air. Awfully nice job. I got to tell you, Cowboy, and I know it's only, uh, you know, two thirds of the season that we've seen Brian Pena play. But knowing the state of catching the way it is today, and there are some very, very good catchers out there, but there's also a lot of mediocrity out there. I am really surprised that Pena has never been just watching him so far this year and maybe we'll understand it a little bit better by the end of the year. But I'm curious if you agree. I'm a little surprised he's never been at least for a season or two an everyday catcher in the big league. I'd like to hear your thoughts when we come back on that. Pena knocks in a run with a two out single. We're off to the seventh. Reds now lead three nothing. Double by Billy Hamilton got the Reds on the board in the first inning with a single into left field. One nothing Reds. Mike Leak with two on. Bounces one down the third baseline to drive in Donald Lutz. Leak worked out of a couple of tough jams in the third and in the fourth. This great play by Santiago, the final out, stranding two in the fourth inning. And then a moment ago, Pena with a sinking liner, knocking in a run with two outs. Three nothing. You're up to speed as the Diamondbacks come to bat here in the seventh inning. Mike Leak working on a two hit shutout. Leak is fan Trumbo twice on the same sequence of pitches. But none bigger than when he got Trumbo on a pitch just like that. Back in the fourth inning with runners at second and third and only one out. It was a two nothing game at that time. That curveball has been a plus pitch for Leak all night long. Got a big strikeout 
early in the ball game with Paul Goldschmidt on that exact pitch, and he's gone to it time and time again, especially against Trumbo. Prado will follow Trumbo, and then the number seven hitter, right fielder Gerardo Parra. Just off the corner, two and two. Mentioned Trumbo Club 34 home runs and knocked in 100 runs a year ago, yet the Angels traded him. Well, you what kind of wonder what is to come? For these Diamondbacks, we've talked so much about the Reds, and that's what we're most concerned about. You know, they buyers, these sellers, they standing put. What are they going to do with the deadline? But for these Diamondbacks, now with a new head man who has never been in this kind of position before, Tony La Russa went to the Hall of Fame as a manager. But now as president of baseball operations, he has an inherited general manager in Kevin Town. Has come under tremendous fire as there is strike three called a trumbo and he fans for the third time tonight. And here's our Cholula flamethrower that cutting fastball right back over the inside corner right at belt high. And you can see the look in Trumbo's face. He did not think. That was that much of a hot sauce pitch. Martin Prado. I, I want to get back to that question though before we talk about anything with the Diamondbacks. But I threw out to you the idea of pain and having never been an everyday guy as a catcher in the major leagues in his entire career, I'm surprised by it. Are you? From what I've seen, I can't say that I'm. I, I can say that I am surprised that he has not been an everyday catcher. But I I told you when we went off the air, I had heard coming into this season that he was not a real good game call. I think he's been a phenomenal game call. And there are some guys that don't really like where he sets up on the plate or where he is as far as where he's receiving the ball. You know, that that's kind of um, I guess it's it's different from pitcher to pitcher for me. I like for him to sit a little bit off the plate because it gives me the perfect target. I don't want to miss him. But there are other guys that want him to sit right on the corner. And I think he adjusts from pitcher to pitcher it just depends on who that pitcher may be at that given time. Well he's been mighty good at first base as well as behind the plate. The thing that I've noticed about Brian Pena. He's just. He's a big fella, but he's a great athlete. He can run. He hustles. He's going to give you great at bats. And to be able to make plays like this over at first base when you spent your entire career behind the plate, I think that tells you something about a fella. You know, another thing it's going to do for him, Cowboy, and not that there's a ton of mileage on his body because of the, you know, really the limited number of games he has really played in his major league career is primarily a backup guy, but playing more and more first base, that'll add some years on your yes, career too. Will. And I think what we're seeing is with a little bit of extra playing time, that bat's starting to come around a little bit, especially from the left side. It's difficult to hit when you get one game or one at bat a week. And let's face it, for a lot of backup catchers, that's all you get. You don't get to play a whole lot, especially in the American League. I think he's starting to like it down there at first base a little bit, isn't he, Jim Day? He is liking it down there. He loves to see his name in the lineup. But he told me something that caught me off guard. He says he gets more tired playing first base than he does catching an entire game. Maybe it's using different muscles or your, your brain or whatever. But he says he gets more tired down there at the corner, which caught me off guard a little bit. Well, you're not going to get that one. That is smoked down the right field line. And into the corner, and Parra can really run. Although he's going to stop here, his team trailing 3 0, two outs in the inning. Parra, a two out double in the Diamondback seventh inning. Tried to get that ball in on the hands of Parra. Parra got inside of it. 
Just pulled it right down the line. It's a pretty good piece of hitting. Well, now D.D. Gregorius, he tripled into right field back in the third inning with one out. And Leak got out of that jam. And then Gregorius robbed on a hot smash up the middle on a diving play by Ramon Santiago, who threw him out in the fifth. So he's hit the ball hard twice tonight against Mike Lee. Reds with a three nothing lead Arizona bats here in the seventh inning. Pitcher spot due up next, and right now David Peralta, who was in the lineup as a starter last night, is standing in the on deck circle. We see three Diamondbacks last night swing three and zero. Yes, we did. Surely DD is not going to swing three and zero. I can't remember the last time I saw any team. I don't care if it's 15 innings or 115 innings. I don't remember the last time I saw three guys on one team. I don't remember the last time I saw three guys in one game swing on three zero pitches. I agree. I'm not mistaken, I think it was Goldschmidt, which we weren't surprised by. But the others, I think, were Peralta. And was it Montero? And Peralta was the one that really surprised yeah. me. Because he was a young he's a youngster and he was hitting at the top of the order. Right in front of Goldschmidt. This will be a big pitch for Leak right here. You get to three and two, you got a chance. Well, he's shaking off Devin once, and Gregorius saying, "Hang on a minute." And now Didi will get back in there as Leak settles on the rubber, and Mezzarocco goes through the signs, and Leak says, "Okay, this time, three one." And a base hit in the left field. They are going to hold the runner at third base. That's all about Donald Lutz right there. As the ball came off the bat, Big Lutz was charging it very aggressively. And you have no choice as, as a third base coach but to hold the runner. You see Lutz come in. I mean, he's right behind the infield as he gets to the baseball. To back two out hits by Parra and Gregorius. Peralta is announced as the pinch hitter. And all of a sudden, the Diamondbacks have a tying run coming to the plate. Gregorius has won the bat very well tonight. In the first first two at bats, Tom, were balls that he pulled to the right side sharply, and that ball there, he just feathers it into left field. When you're spraying the ball around like that, you're seeing it awfully well. All right, Jeff Pico comes out for a short visit. And the Reds' bullpen comes to life for the first time tonight, and it's a right hander, Sam LeCure. Been told anything, nor has anything been reported about Manny Parra. He had some issues earlier in the year. We just haven't seen him on the mound, that is. You know, he's battled through some, some back issued, and I guess that was addressed earlier today. But if there was ever a situation is screaming for a left hander right here and right now. This would be it. 
We've got Enciarte standing in the on deck circle. He's a left handed batter. One and one on Peralta. That ball is club, but right at Billy Hamilton to end the inning. Diamondback strand two. They stand and stretch in the ballpark. Reds lead three nothing. Friday on August the 8th. That'll kick off the Hall of Fame induction Reds weekend. There will be more than 20 Reds legends that'll be on the field for a post game ceremony, including Johnny Bench, Chris Sabo, Eric Davis, Tony Perez, members of this year's induction class, and a spectacular fireworks show. You don't want to miss that weekend. That is one of the great weekends in this city, which occurs every other year. They got some studs going in there this year. Oh, yeah. And three of the four native Cincinnatians. I mean, think about that. Parker, Griffey, and Oster. Three young men born and raised right here in Cincinnati. I actually, the more I think about it, I think Ken Griffey Jr. was born in the same hometown as his dad, Denora PA. But grew up here in Cincinnati, of course, going to Mulder High School. All right, Reds batting. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning, the Diamondbacks have gone to their bullpen. They got six good innings tonight out of Trevor Cahill. That matches a season high six innings for him and his right hander Bo Schultz. Three and oh. Schultz just brought up today. An eight and seven record being used as a starter down in. Triple A Reno, Nevada, with an ERA of almost six as a starter. He was with a team in the opening day roster and pitched in one game when they were over in Sydney, Australia against the Dodgers. And when they came back, they sent him back to the minor league. We got some giddy up on that fastball. The injuries that they've had. You got a guy that can throw the ball like this 97 98 miles an hour. Hey let's let's give him a little seasoning and see what he's got. Two and two on Skip Schumacher will be followed by Zach Cozart and then Mike Leake. You like Leake for another inning here tonight. I do. I told you when we started, I thought this was going to be a good start for Lee. It's 
low roller to the right side. Schultz will get there. And the clue short flip to Goldschmidt is in time. No TV tomorrow, but the Blues will get you ready on Reds Live 30 minutes before the start of play on Thursday night from Miami and 30 minutes before every game here on Fox Sports Ohio. Reds Live is presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Jim Day already planning on doing a, a great piece, I'm told, along South Beach. Any <laughs> truth to that, Jim Day? Wow. Is I that just don't know what to say about that. Yeah, I, I, that's the first image that popped in my mind, and that is just not good. About that, Jim Day and a Speedo live and in concert. And, and I was talking about Jim Day doing that at nighttime. <laughs> You've ever been to South Beach? I'll fit right in. <laughs> you be looking good. <laughs> Hey, you're right though Jim you would fit right in. I mean they, you know nobody even give you a, a second thought about it. No. Nobody will notice that tan or lack of. <laughs> Jim you better defend yourself here. Well it's a farmer's tan right now. Oh well, I got one too. I'm proud of it. There's some serious people watching. Well then maybe there. both you guys ought to get <laughs> <laughs> the, long south beach. the cowboy ain't hitting the beach, not South Beach. You'd be looking good in Speedo oh, and man. cowboy boots. There's a ground ball, a diving play by Aaron Hill, and a really nice play by the Arizona second baseman. We've seen some defense here tonight at second base, and Brandon Phillips is not even on the field to play. Like Aaron Hill's hands all right. Uh -huh. So Cowboy, you mean to tell me all the times you've been down to Miami? Never. I mean, you've never walked around in maybe like a, a pair of cut-off denim shorts with some cowboy boots and a lid, maybe a tank top. Tank top. I don't even own a tank top. <laughs> you'd be looking good. Yeah, I'd be looking good. All right. <laughs> That tan starting just above my elbow. As soon as that white hits that sunshine, everybody starts <laughs> squinting. One and one on Mike Lee. My skin's like that glare that hits off the mirror and yet just burns your eyeball up. Go on back in, boy. <laughs> one and one on Lee. And this one popped up. This might come over. I thought that maybe might be a little closer to Jim Day down there. One and two on Mike Leak. And he went around that is strike three. So while we're gone for a minute and a half, let your mind sort of settle in on Jim Day and the Cowboy on South Beach.
Mike Link, you thought he was in line for a big performance here tonight. A lot of it has been about the curveball. You see it there to Goldschmidt early in the ball game. He fed it to Trumbo like he was eating dinner. You start looking for the curveball, all of a sudden that fastball looks that much harder, and Luke has been precision point on here tonight. Fastball predominantly here tonight from Leak. He'll cut it, sink it, as we've seen. But the curveball has been the big key. It's really taken the Diamondbacks off that fastball. And a first pitch breaking ball. Knocked down by Santiago, but that one just out of his reach. So that'll be a base hit by Ender Enciarte to open up the Arizona eighth. Now you go back to the seventh inning. Prado hit the ball very hard with one out. Pena made a diving play to take away him. Parra smoked a double down the right field line. Gregorius just dumped a little flare into left field, but a base hit. And then the final out of the inning was a rocket off the bat of Peralta right at Billy Hamilton in center. And now a hard hit ball by Enciarte to begin the eighth. Well, now you've got to have Broxton up. You've got to have him ready for the man that's standing on deck. If you don't get Hill here, you may see Jonathan Broxton against Goldschmidt. Broxton worked a perfect inning in the 10th here last night. And now the 1 0 on Aaron Hill. And a fastball is high. 2 and 0. Oh. This is where you're starting to see a little bit of fatigue from Leak. Instead of being down around the knees with the fastball, you're starting to see that fastball creep up in the strike zone. Mazzarocco sees it and immediately heads out to the mound to discuss this with Mike Leak. We saw a little bit of this in the seventh inning as well. Just a little bit. But the standard rule of thumb for a manager, especially if someone for a pitcher that's thrown the ball as well as Leak has tonight, you don't put him in a situation where he could lose this ball game. That is when you turn it over to the bullpen. That is a foul ball. Well, Enciarte was not sure whether that ball was called foul or not. He continued on to third base. It wasn't fouled by much. Hill tonight is struck out looking. Reached on a throwing air by Todd Frazier. And Lee hit him with a pitch on his jersey back in the sixth inning. 2-1. Strike two. Ryan Price staying with his starter rather than handing the ball to Broxton to begin a clean eighth inning. That has pretty much been money in the bank. Broxton and Chapman starting in the eighth. This will be the 100th pitch of the ninth for Mike Leak. And I imagine if you're Brian Price, you're looking further than just right now. You have to when you're when you're working with this bullpen and with any bullpen for that matter. But you had that extra inning game last night. You had both Broxton and Chapman pitch in that ball game. You've got a day game tomorrow. And not an off day in sight. Right. They go to Miami, they go to Cleveland, they come back here against Cleveland, roll right through the weekend, swing and a miss by Aaron Hill. Good breaking ball there. So when he's used it, it has been a money pitch tonight. Seven strikeouts for Leak. Another curveball from Leak. And you can see as that ball comes out of the hand of Leak, there is no hump in that breaking ball. It doesn't go up before it comes to the plate. It starts on the same plane as the fastball. 
and then the bottom falls out of it. It drops straight down. Off the outside corner, it's ball one to Paul Goldschmidt. Good pitch here on the outside corner, one and one. Goldschmidt is struck out swinging, popped up to Santiago, the second baseman. And he bounced into a 5-4 fielder's choice. He actually lined into a 5-4 fielder's choice. He hit that rocket to the left side that Frazier made a dive to his left. It was in his glove that scored it out. And they cut down the runner in front of Goldschmidt. Two balls and a strike. Leak really staying away right now. And rightly so. This is the one man in this lineup. You do not want to let him beat you. Two and one to Goldschmidt. Leak the pause and now the pitch. A little bit low. Three and one. Well, it appears after being told anyway that you know, Manny Parra was going to be available for the game tonight. That with Miguel Montero, a left handed batter standing in the on deck circle, it will not be a left hander to face him when he comes up. 3 1. Now full count. Well, that was perfect placement right there for Mike Lee, right on the outside corner. Goldsmith's thinking, put two runs on the board with one swing of the bat, pulled off it just enough. Three balls, two strikes on Goldschmidt. Strike three called. How about that? Leak has been down there all day long, right around the bottom of the kneecaps. Just wears out Goldschmidt here on our Mazda pitch by pitch. Down and away, continues to stay down and away. Then when he gets to crunch time, you paint right on the outside corner. You get the swing and a miss, and he comes right back with a cutter and runs right back over the inside corner, paralyzing one of the better hitters in the National League. What a sequence that was by Lee. And now one more out to go. Reds have a 3 nothing lead here in the top of the eighth inning. Miguel Montero has bounced to second. Had an infield hit on a little dribbler up the third baseline. And then flied out to Lutz in left field in the sixth. Big swing and a miss, strike one. If Lee gets this out, he may be given a chance to finish this game. Montero and he hit him and that's it for Lee Ryan Price going to come out to the mound before Mark Trump or is he going to ask the umpire first about whether that ball hit him maybe not so fast on that pitching change I think Brian is asking did he swing swing at the pit yep you read the lips of the home plate umpire Chris Cuccioni. I don't think he swung, but it definitely got him in the back of the elbow. And Brian Price will now come to the mound. No signal given yet. And he just takes the ball. What an effort tonight by Mike Lee. Big time. Seven and two thirds innings. Allows only five hits. He leaves with two on and two out. 
here in the eighth inning. This will be our skyline chili. Call to the bullpen of the big man, Jonathan Broxton, running in. Coming up right after the game, Fox Sports Ohio will break it all down. Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Jim Day hoping to be hanging with his pals in the Fox Sports Ohio condominium celebrating a victory tonight. A dicey situation here. Reds with a 3-0 lead. Trumbo the batter. And now on the face of his right-hander, Jonathan Broxton. Straight away center field. And it will stay in the ballpark. Inning over one pitch for Jonathan Broxton. Leap seven and two thirds shutout innings. Reds bat in the bottom of the eighth, leading three nothing. Thousand fans receive a Jay Bruce bobblehead. It's presented by the Ohio Lottery. For tickets call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger locations or log on to reds.com slash tickets. I'm Jim Day and speaking of Jay Bruce, if you're just joining us, he is on the bereavement list, uh, which is a minimum of three days. Now it's normally a private matter with the player unless he wants to divulge 
uh, what family member unfortunately passed away. Rob Butcher, director of media relations, talked to Jay tonight, and Jay told him that his grandfather passed away, and he expects to return to the team by Friday. So everyone from Fox Sports Ohio and Reds fans, I'm sure, would like to send their thoughts and prayers to Jay and his family for their loss. There's no doubt about that one. I don't know if Jay was particularly close to his grandfather. For those of us that had a grandfather you were very close to, man, oh, man. Did That's you understand? blow. Bo Schultz still on the mound, and Billy Hamilton trying to bunt his way on, and it doesn't get any easier than that right there. One pitch and one out for Schultz here in the eighth inning. Looking ahead of the Arizona ninth inning with the Reds leading 3 0, and Aroldis Chapman, the man warming up in the bullpen. Martin Prado, Gerardo Parra, and D.D. Gregorius, 6 7 8 in their batting order. Wonder Parra will bat being a. Well, he's a switch hitter, is he not? No, left handed no. bat. Wonder if he'll hit in that inning. I would say not. <laughs> Number one, he doesn't hit left handers anyway. And number two, that's Chapman. Among Santiago for three in the game. Broken bat foul ball. Milwaukee and Tampa Bay tied at one in the top of the eighth inning. That was a Ben Zobrist home run for the Rays. They tied that game, and he's his name frequently mentioned. Uh, with some connection in some form or fashion, but the one thing that you know when you read anything about the Reds at the trade deadline is you don't know no. because very close to the vest as close as it gets. That's t-shirt close to get to the vest. You got to go t-shirt dress shirt and then the vest. I mean that old group right there around Walt Jockety and his staff. That's one of those tank top t-shirts yeah, you walk there around you in. There you go. The muscle shirt. <laughs> what did do to Santiago? Yeah, you see this guy, Bo Schultz, for the Diamondbacks, throwing the ball 95 to 98 miles an hour. He's 28 years old. He came up with the A's. He was an undrafted free agent. Then the Diamondbacks signed him as a six-year free agent. And you think, 98? What's going on? I guess they're just some guys that learn this art of pitching or commanding their body a little bit later in life. The 98. And those are the kind of guys that if they can figure out how to throw strikes, you're all of a sudden watching them as a seventh and eighth inning guy for a, a contending team in about three years. No from doubt. We brought up earlier, they've had him starting this year for their triple A team. Good to see Ramon Santiago. He's still in some pain down there. All is hard that trainer came out to look at him. And he is just now getting back in the box. One and two on Santiago. Field. Trumbo backs up a few paces, and that's out number two in the Reds' eighth inning. Well, we'd like to send out a big couple of happy birthdays tonight. Norma Lamar turns 90 years young today. Happy birthday, Norma. And Bob Flagg celebrating his 95th birthday. And he is watching tonight in Montezuma, Indiana. Happy birthday. Montezuma. Where's that at? I got to tell you, I have driven all over 
of the Hoosiers team. And that is one I don't know, but I will take a look because I am interested myself. The only thing I know about Montezuma is that revenge you get down there in Mexico. <laughs> I'm gonna wear you out. Wore me out 28 pounds later. Not good, huh? No. To the count and it's taken high. Montezuma, Indiana is just west of Indianapolis over near the Illinois border. That's it. Another roll is Chapman. Way to close it out in the night. Dog plays of the game. Both turned in by the same Cincinnati Red. Two great plays tonight, Cowboy, by Ramon Santiago. Catching that ball blindly and diving for this ball and then having to throw blindly back to first base, giving a speedy former Red, Didi Gregorius. The Reds are known for their defense, especially at second base, but it's usually Brandon Phillips tonight, Ramon Santiago. I wonder if Chapman will hit 104 tonight. Well, he was something else last night. His average fastball in a 1 2 3 inning, in which he struck out the side for the fourth time in seven days. His average fastball last night was 102 miles per hour. How about a cowboy last night? I mean, this is just reaching back and saying, here it is. Take your best shot, buddy. Blue by you. Back at that at bat last night with Goldschmidt, he was choked up a good three inches on the bat and was still tardy. Chapman comes into the game, that opponent's bench is like, oh, great. <laughs> All right, here we go. Reds leading 3 nothing as the Diamondbacks bat here in the top of the ninth inning. Chapman. One batter, one pitch to strand two in the eighth. And Chapman at 100 miles per hour is high, ball one. Well, Para is standing in the on deck circle, believe it or not. Left handed batter. And 
2 0 now on Martin Prado. Red scored single runs in each of the first two innings, came up with another run in the sixth. And they have blanked the Diamondbacks so far on five hits in their strike. Took a little off of that one to get it over at 98. Two now on Martin Prado. Of course, Chapman, every time he comes into a game and strikes out a batter, he continues to add to his major league record, having struck out at least one hitter in each of his last 44 games. 2 2. He broke the record at 39, held by Bruce Souter, and that record stood. Since 1977, you think about all the great dominant relievers since 77, and to think that none of those pitchers struck out a batter in at least 39 games in a row. And that's a comebacker to Chapman. That throw is 94 to Payne. One away. <laughs> All right here comes Gerardo Parra. Well, lefty against a lefty. Apparently, one Arizona Diamondback is not all that worried about it, Jim Day. Well, all star catcher Miguel Montero, left handed batter, was quoted as saying is he would rather hit off of a roll to Chapman than catch him. If you remember, he caught him in the all star game. And he said, man, that seemed a whole lot faster than 100 miles per hour. He hurt the heck out of my hand. I would rather hit off of him than catch him. And that's saying something because he's a left handed batter. Well, here's a left handed batter, Gerardo Parra. Strike one, 101. But make no mistake about it, Mr. Montero would be thrilled to be catching a role as Chapman if he played on his team. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then that way he wouldn't have to hit off of him either. That usually means you're winning. One and one on Parra. Slider off the outside corner. This pitch may have fooled home plate umpire Chris Guccione. Trick says it's a little bit outside. Two and one to Parra. And there's strike two. Boy, not sure about that one. Two and two to Parra. Chapman ready, and here it comes. And a bouncer to the right side. And this will be out number two. So a pair of Diamondbacks have put it in play against him. But both have been retired. That's the bottom line. And Chapman now an out away. From the Reds getting a 3 nothing win in game two of this series. And they'll have Alfredo Simon tomorrow against the best Arizona starter in Wade Miley. That little fella's still hanging around. Yeah, he is. With the shades on. And Dad's telephone in his hand. Been a good night at the plate for D.D. Gregorius. A triple. Had a hit taken away on a diving stab by Santiago. And then a single his last time up. Of course, Chapman needing a strikeout to keep that streak alive at 44 games. One and oh on Gregorius. And there a strike.
and one to Gregorius. Slider strike two. Diamondbacks have been a little bit more patient here these first few hitters than what we've normally seen against Chapman. Not wildly swinging. Two and two on Gregorius. Strike came out to run the string to 45 in a row. And Chapman slams the door of the ninth inning. Spectacular 